Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. This is rock solid advice. We're living in challenging times. Sometimes it seems that the more advanced the world gets, the more advanced the problems are. Seriously, when you sit and talk with folks who are in their 80s and beyond, you might find some of them who can give you great advice, but the majority of them, they hardly have the answers certainly to the problems we are facing today. But if you're looking for answers, you could probably start with some teachers. It's okay to connect with some good teachers, but there are some teachers who really don't have the answers. But then you could think about ordinary folks, people who are your friends, and over time you have come to realize that some of your regular friends are full of advice, but ever so often the, these advice don't always fit your problem. So what are we doing here, talking about 21st century sound advice? I believe the challenges that come our way are common in some respects, but there are some 21st century problems that require 21st century sound advice, like this one. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7. There is something curious about this bit of advice. The guy who sends this advice to you, his story raises some red flag. At the time of writing, he is in prison. We're talking about the Apostle Paul. I, and I believe only people who are in trouble with the law end up in prison. So why should I even take advice from a guy sitting down in a Roman prison cell? If he was smart as he wants me to think, he would not be in jail. I think we might throw out his advice. It is as bad as the character who sent it. Hold on. Let us look again. Yes, he is in prison. But let us explore his life. I think his introduction line at the beginning of this letter is worth considering. It says, I, Paul, and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. Hold on. Jesus has proven himself to be super special. In chapter 2, we read about this Jesus character, and he's quite a formidable personality. He gave up his life in order to win people to an exciting life in God. He would be part of a pantheon of great men and women who died and are soon forgotten, except this Jesus came back from the dead three days after a vicious and brutal death. Then once he was back to life, it gets more exciting. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2 verses 9 to 11. This is awesome. I've never heard of anyone with this distinction. But now I know one. His name is Jesus. You have to understand that Jesus is not an ordinary guy. Jesus is the Son of God. In other words, Jesus is not a smart guy who popped up on the scene out of nowhere. He has been around from the beginning. He created the whole world. He has this outrageous ability to perform miracles. And most of all, he offers himself to be a friend to you. This is the Jesus who Paul says he is his servant. So with that small segment of Jesus' resume in mind, let us look at the sound advice that Paul gives. Did you notice this prisoner is advising us to rejoice? Or if we could come up with a more contemporary word, live in a place of joy and celebration. You might think that this is goofy, but trust me, it isn't. 
The main reason for you to be always happy is because you have salvation. Jesus said that when he has come to make life, he comes to give us life that we might enjoy it to the full. But don't just take my word for it, put it to the test. But it's the bigger advice that I want us to consider. Here, the writer says, if you have a struggle with advice, if you're anxious about this new job, if you fear getting cancer because so many people around you are dying of cancer, then you might want to listen to the rest of what Jesus gave Paul to say. You might not have been seen by a doctor for anxiety disorder, but you live in the world of anxiety. Crime in the community, health issues. You've been praying for something for a long time and it doesn't, it hasn't turned up. Paul says that whatever it is that keeps you awake at night or that thing that robs you of your joy or you just can't seem to relax, Paul is saying to you, there is a way to get rid of that anxiety. He says, pray about the issue. Pray for Jesus to help you to overcome the challenges. And when you are finished praying with thanksgiving, then watch for the signs that things are about to get better. You begin to sense peace. There is nothing like the peace of God when you have troubles. Then you have, you have super, super problems. You can pray about them and Jesus gives you peace. But this is not your regular peace that you get from speaking to a counselor. It goes much deeper than that. You give Jesus your anxiety and he will give you the most unique peace there is. And your friends might see you a few days later and you can brag about this. God's peace is uncommon. After all, he is the prince of peace. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this. So now you know what to do. Instead of living with anxiety caused from something that you cannot control, then this is the time for the big exchange. Give the anxiety and its cause over to Jesus. And Jesus will in turn give you supernatural peace.